Happy Tuesday. Hi and good afternoon. I am Lorraine Brock with Get Organized, professional organizer and owner of a company called Get Organized. And part of what I do is give tips on Tip Tuesday all about organizing your home, your business, or your life. And today I am outside in my backyard. Uh, I've caught, did a couple Tip Tuesdays out here before and wanted to do one today on organizing a picnic. Now, I love picnics. I actually, my last big picnic was back in October. I've done many since then on a small scale with my grandkids, but I decided to do a picnic uh, last October and surprise my husband. So I did everything. All I told him is I said, I need this particular day completely cleared. And like a, you said, Lorraine, a whole day for your picnics? Yes. So my idea was to sort of steal my husband for the day. And we have some uh, property in East Texas where it's about an hour and 45 to two hours one way. We decided, uh, I decided that we were going to go down there and I was going to put a big, beautiful, romantic picnic back in the middle of the woods. And I had to obviously do this all myself without letting him know. And I decided on the food and there were certain supplies that I didn't have that I needed to pull off. And we spent the entire afternoon, probably four hours, in the middle of nowhere amongst trees and wind and beautiful weather. And we had a wonderful romantic picnic. And it took some planning, absolutely, and definitely some scheduling. And one of the things I always talk about with all of our clients and all those that view us on Tip Tuesdays is there's a difference between planning to do something versus scheduling it. Two different things. And most of us, on the things we want to do and enjoy in life, often plan on doing it. Oh, I wish I would do that, or I wanna do that, or one day I'll do that. But you rarely ever schedule, like put the idea to paper or your digital calendar of when you're actually going to do something. It was one of the best picnics I had ever set up. And in fact, we will do it again. It was the perfect getaway. It was the, per and we drove down there and drove back all in the same day. So I needed a whole day to pull this off just to carry it out, not including the, the planning that went in it. He had no, no clue. And that, and that was pretty hard to keep secret and trying to bake and do all that stuff while he was still in the house. So today I'm gonna give um, five, actually six tips today I added one last minute that I'm going to share with you on organizing a great picnic. Now, there's a lot of things that you need uh, that can be very disposable or very inexpensive, things that you probably already have around the house. But I like to have, I actually have a tote in my garage that I keep my picnic stuff in. Now, that doesn't mean I don't pull anything from my kitchen. But some of the things that I specifically use for picnics or want to make sure I have all the time, I keep in that. And I keep it in a tote so it doesn't get dusty and dirty. Because I do this enough where I can, it really warrants having a special place for it. So let's get started with the six organizing tips for organizing a fantastic picnic. So the very tip number one is have a great picnic basket. Now, I'm gonna move around a little bit today because I wanna show you guys what I have here. And you'll see that I'll be showing you guys some things. I'm gonna scoot this back just a little bit and angle here because I wanna show you sort of what I have here. This is, and an, let me start this. I have purchased the wicker picnic baskets and I think they're beautiful and I've loved mine. In fact, when I got mine early on, uh, I think it was probably for our first or second anniversary Christmas gift or something, I wore the dick inside of that thing. It was, it had dishes in it, and they were all plastic, and it was just absolutely a gorgeous picnic basket, and I used it all up. But as my family has changed and my needs have changed, I decided that I wanted something that was more space-saving, like I dual purpose, uh, space-saving dual purpose, and to be able to um, still carry a large amount of things, so I needed the space in it. So I did some shopping around, uh, mainly on the internet, uh, e but even on the internet at local stores in the area. And this is what I came up with. And you can see here, when it's not in use, it collapses. 
This is actually my picnic basket. Now, some of you might need two of these, but this particular um, one comes in many, many different patterns, including patriotic, uh, traditional uh, gingham, and I love these. And let me show you a little bit of how it's open. So that these are metal handles here with a Velcro handle that can come off and wash. So you have these metal, actually probably more aluminum. And then you take the front here. This is actually your top of your, you can see here, it's the top of your picnic basket. It's unzipped right now. And I just take it and I push it down, open it up, and sort of push out the bottom of this. So I'm sort of un unfolding it as I'm going. I'm sort of push this on the surface. And eventually what it makes, if you just keep pushing on it, it makes a wonderful picnic basket just like that. And it has a pocket right about here. Really good sized pocket. It has a pocket on the top, if you can see that, a Velcro that you can stick, slide things in there. And on the inside, it has a very large section. Now you could pack a small picnic with this that are all like the, the drinks and the cold items, and then maybe use a wicker basket for all the dry items or the paper products. But I really love this. And what I love about it is the best thing is that it's collapsible. It's not going to take up a lot of space when you're not using it. So look at this. You can see here, this is the picnic basket. Let me face it up the front here. There's the inside of it. And you can see if my hand goes on the inside, sort of what it looks like. And you have a pocket here, and then you have a pocket down in front here as well. And these just come up. And then you have your picnic basket that you can use. So again, when you're not in use, the picnic basket absolutely collapses down and I store it very slim picnic basket. So that's a really must have for when you're wanting to do picnics and you're really wanting to save on space. I think as you get older, you tend to accumulate more and because of that, space becomes really an issue. Though it can be an issue at any stage in your life. Okay, tip number two is to have a great picnic basket. So I'm going to walk out here. I'm going to see if I can flip this camera around and let's see if we can do this. And we're going to see if we can get out here. So you'll see my picnic basket right or my picnic blanket right out there. This is a picnic blanket that I actually bought on Amazon. And again, the patterns just like the picnic basket come in different patterns, the different fabrics. This is a special blanket because if you open it up down here, you'll see it has a metal um, foil, not quite foil, it's actually a soft foil liner where this can go on the ground and it doesn't get the top of the blanket wet. For many years, I actually had a, like a big thick quilt and the quilt was something that I used for my picnics. And I definitely could still use it, but what happened was it would get all dirty or wet and I'd have to wash it and put it back up. And, and I do still wash this, but I don't have to wash it every time, just depending on how dirty it gets. But it also, it has a little thing here that you can fold it up and a little bungee here that you can make it really, really small once it's folded up. And this is actually a quite large, uh, I would say it's almost a little bit bigger or the size of a twin sheet, maybe a, an extra large twin sheet or extra long. And I have just found this to be a great solution for picnics, especially you're on the wet ground and things don't stick to the bottom of it. So you're able to um, keep it cleaner and that moisture from the, the west, wet ground doesn't actually penetrate on to the uh, blanket. So have a good blanket. Pick your patterns. Uh, I wanted something really traditional on my picnic blanket or my, um, and then I wanted something a little bit more stylish on my picnic basket. All right, so tip number three. One of the things I think is absolutely a need is wet wipes. But even more so than wet wipes, every time I go to the zoo, 
go for a picnic or take the kids or grandkids out somewhere, I'm always wanting to make sure that the sticky hands and the dirty faces and the chocolate pudding and all that is all off and clean on them. And wet wipes will do it, but sometimes it just needs a little bit more of a scrubbing. So I always pack me in Ziploc back bags. I pack me just clean, wet dishcloths. And um, it's just really nice to, if I wanna, you know, if you wanna cool off, uh, if you're hot, if you just need to clean up something or wipe down a table, wet wipes will do it, but you have to use a lot of them. And I think this has a little bit more of a scrub um, versus just a wet wipe, but always keep some kind of wet rag. Wet wipes will work. It's just not my favorite thing to use. And obviously this costs nothing and you can just wash it and reuse it again. So always take wet rags and uh, if necessary as well, take wet wipes. Okay, tip number four, dress up uh, with paper plates, cute napkins. So I'm a clearance shopper. I love to find deals. What, one of the things that I normally scout for when I'm going on to the clearance items outside of clothing, yes, I have a little thing of clothing and definitely with my grandkids, is I'm a really um, a collector of napkins. If you say Lorraine as an organizer in an organized home, what do you collect? Napkins. So people know this about me and sometimes they'll just find things and give them to me every once in a while. Like, hey Lorraine, here's a little tree. I found some napkins. This particular napkin I found at a garage sale. It had a little sticker on it for 25 cents off. Just a little cute little pattern and really classy napkins. These were completely, I think these were at, I don't even know where these were, but these were 85 cents on clearance. Could be Party City, not quite sure, but they have a little pattern in there as well, chevron pattern. And then these were a dollar, and I got these at like Home Goods. And again, some of these are a little definitely lean on the more springy side, but I have watermelon ones, I have striped ones, especially if I'm taking, uh, if I'm doing more of a manly picnic versus a, you know, a girly picnic. I will definitely change the napkins out. So you can dress up a picnic or even a dinner table. I and mean, really anything is dressed up when you use really cute paper napkins and they don't have to be very expensive. Some people ask me, Lorraine, do you, do you think you should buy picnic bas baskets with the dishes, the silverware and the glasses? It's sure it's okay. I would definitely lean towards getting things that are non-breakable. So go with the plastic aluminum side of it. But I've actually switched over to more of the paper goods. I think that I can actually, be, and I, really it's because of the storage. If you noticed when I first started, my picnic basket here absolutely collapses. And because of that, it wouldn't collapse if I had dishes all in it. And so I think that's really important is to realize that your storage, where are you going to store those cups? Where are you going to store those plates? And if you struggle with that already, you probably want something that will more collapse. So I just collapsed the picnic baskets I just showed you. Here's what it looks like collapsed. Just an excellent space-saving picnic basket. And again, I couldn't do this if I was having to store the plates and the cups and the silverware and all that. And not that you can't have it, just something that I want to do differently with my storage right now. All right, so tip number five for an organized picnic. These are must-haves, whether you're having a picnic at your house on the back porch or you are having a picnic out and about. These are table tents. I love them because they will basically keep all your food and drinks covered up when you're not using them. There's a string here at the top and there's like an inside here. And I push this little piece right here up into the top up here. And that is what it does. So when I'm going off playing on the playground with the kids or I'm done with the food for a little bit, I just take the table tents and I put right over the food. They do make these in a couple different sizes and you can buy them in more quantity than just one off. So I would definitely buy them probably four to eight at a time. See how many you need. Now this is a pretty wide base here. I wanna guess this is probably 20 inches across is what I would imagine. You can just see from my shoulder here. They do make them a little smaller. 
but these are great to keep flies and insects off of your picnic when you're done or you're wanting to scoop something out or have something on your plate that you're eating but you want to cover up the rest of the food so table tents is a must-have for a picnic all right tip number six now i don't have any examples of this right now but i am going to post some links down below of some finger foods that i recently did for the picnic that i spoke of that we did last october make sure when you're doing a picnic i really think finger foods are probably the best way to go can you scoop out things and plate things like you know forks and silverware sure you can but you want to enjoy the experience not so much the cleanup now if you're doing a picnic outside of your home it might be more convenient to do that but if you're doing a picnic away from home try to go with finger foods one of the um the things that i ended up doing i made these little heart shaped um pies i put like blueberries and or apples or raspberries inside of them and bake them and they were just the dessert that we ate uh, for our one of our food items i i don't know what it's called but i actually took some pastry dough and stuffed it with like chicken and spinach and cheese and a little bit and i folded it really cute and then we ended up having those there are casserole dishes that you can actually have a um, like a heating element inside of it that you can microwave and it will stay uh, warm for a lengthy period of time if you're traveling with it or you have ones that will also freeze and you can keep like you know cooled casserole dishes like salads or uh, jello type things you can keep those cool so you can get those and it will help with that transporting of things so i will post with the finger foods that I use, a couple recipes down below, sometimes by tomorrow, so you can sort of see some finger foods. But Pinterest has tons of ideas on finger foods. Very romantic and good. Uh, it may require a little bit of work, but I think it's so, so worth it. So that is my six tips on organizing a picnic. And again, I think the very best one is the picnic basket because it has just been a great space saver. All right. So last week we talked about the giveaway of the magnetic chalkboard chore chart. You know, our chore talk that we talked on last week was absolutely a hit. We got lots of comments uh, of people saying what they like, what they were gonna implement in their own life or check out on a website. So I think the kids' chores really hit home to a lot of different people that were struggling with chores and what kind of system to sort of create and where do you get your ideas and and do's and don'ts with that and you know there's a lot more to cover and we may actually cover uh, kids chores again with additional information but we had great feedback and the winner of the magnetic chalkboard chore chart is Don and let me try to pronounce the last name is Pepron P-E-P -E -P hyphen R-O-M and she's here in the North Texas area and she has won the magnetic chalkboard chore chart and we will be mailing that out to you shortly, Dawn. So thank you for making comments, wonderful comments, by the way, uh, down below about our last week's tip Tuesday on kids chore. So giveaway today, you're gonna like this. You're gonna really like it. And I thought long and hard because sometimes I don't have giveaways that actually go with the actual topic it does this time we are going to give away do you you really want to know maybe do you really want to know okay there it is the table tent we're going to give away a set of four of these for anyone that leaves a comment down below of the favorite tip now don't choose the favorite tip yet until you look at my recipes. I'll have those up shortly and you can look because tip number six is do finger foods and I'm going to give you some ideas on some finger foods that I think you'll like. So these table tents, use them for any kind of picnics or outdoor gathering. Fourth of July is coming up. Easter's coming up. Uh, these will be great to be able to do things outside and keep the insects off of them. It is not kid proof. That's right. So Basically, you set it on top, but any little hand can go underneath or they can pull it up. So it's not kid proof. Not, not at all. Okay. Um, tip Tuesday's tool of the week. Okay. I did some research on this product. I had them already, but I did a little bit more research and I will post some things, a picture of what I 
saw this product being used for here in the next day. But this product inside here uh, is what I'm going to be talking about, our Tip Tuesday Tool of the Week. And in here is going to be the product we talk about. Now, this product is only at Container Store that I found. You may have found it somewhere else or an off-brand. Just remember that. Secondly, there's unlimited ways to use this. So I will just mention a few of them and also know they come in different sizes and heights and lengths and widths. So you create the combination that you want to create. I also don't know the official name for them. I look, they're just like storage containers. The actual name on them is fine, F-I-N-E. But tell you the truth, I couldn't find them under that word, even on the container store site. So just know a little bit of disclaimer there. So here is the product. And I'm going to show you this particular size first. Uh, you can see the size of it compared to my hand. These are uh, storage boxes. They all come with three dividers that can be moved anywhere and slotted. So on the side of this, you will see little slits right there. You can take out these things that it comes with and slit them and you know, put them in the slot of however you want it. Maybe you need this section to be larger versus what, what, where it is right now. You decide on how you want these. So they also have a little handle here. So you would want to face this part forward and then they're transparent. You can see everything inside of it. One of the reviews that I read online was a, they were a healthcare company and they um, stored mother's breast milk for, I guess, for preemies. And they had been looking for something in their freezer section for a long time to store the packages of milk. And this worked perfectly for them. This, and they think, another thing is they're stackable and you're gonna see that. So here's another size that they sell. And you can see that these are stackable here. There you go. Uh, again, the same handle. They're transparent. You can see they each have three dividers. Again, you can move them anywhere you want in the actual product. And uh, in addition to that, looky here. So they can even stack like this. There's a great combination of them on the Container Store's website. So all you got to do is look. Uh, another picture that we're going to post is some, I think a guy had used them in his garage. He had used the larger here and put them like le left to right. He had put them on a shelf and put all kinds of stuff in it and that was in his garage. It was a great looking organizational shelf. So you can obviously label these. I would highly label that, especially if they're going to be up high and you can't see what's in the very back. Definitely label the front. You may even do uh, a couple different labels and start the top label with what's up front, the next label, what's the second section, the next label in the third section, and the next label, the bottom label down here would be in the fourth section. Some, some, some kind of system like that. If it's down low, you're going to be able to see in it rather easily. So don't worry about that so much from a label aspect. But up high, if something's more head high, you can't see over. So labeling will become really important. So I hope you like these. There, uh, I, I want to say there's like four combination of sizes. And I'm a little, uh, this is going to be a little back or definitely backwards for you guys. But I'll let you sort of see what the label looks like. And this shows the four different sizes there as well. And the larger one does have a, a little handle in the back here, a little hole that you could use if you wanted to do something different with it. And pull it out from that direction. So that's our tip Tuesday tool of the week. All right. Um, last week. Oh, I wanted to show this. The um, last week, this is what we gave away or this week we're giving away from last week's tip Tuesday. So I wanted to show that this is what Don is going to get on the magnetic chore chart. I think that's really awesome and it can magnetize. All right, next week on Tip Tuesday, I'm going to have a guest on. Her name is called Mary Pat Etheridge, and we are going to sit down and talk about some organized ways 
that you as a homeowner need to take in consideration when putting your home on the market. I'm going to give a tip. I'm going to let her give more tips than me since she's the realtor. Uh, she is a realtor with Keller Williams and she services the North Texas area and she's going to be on Known Mary Pat for a long, long time. And um, I think we're going to give you some great tips on getting your home prepared and organized uh, from a realtor's perspective and an organizer's perspective next week on Tip Tuesday. So tune in. Uh, some people say, well, Lorraine, you know, does, does realtors give advice before you put their home on the market? Or they, do you need to bring them in after you get your home already done and cleaned up and ready to go? Well, we'll have Mary Pat answer that question, sort of tell us which is the best solution for most homeowners. All right, um, wanted to mention something. We had a recent client that had communicated with Get Organized, and she had said that some movers just moved her in, and it was an absolute mess. She had hired a moving company to come in and unpack her, and she said it was a total disorganized situation. And so I wanted to sort of touch on that as one of the services. I speak on something every week about something that Get Organized does. I know it's springtime and we're all going to probably see more people moving in our neighborhoods or moving out of our neighborhoods. If you know of someone that might be hiring a moving company to actually do the packing or unpacking, talk to them about hiring a professional organizing company. They will be blown away at the quality of difference, how quickly they'll get set up in their home. Um, how we can come in and not only unpack, but decorate it as well. If there's new products that need to be purchased for the new space they're going in, we know exactly what to get and where to go get it. On the packing side of it, you know, it's one of those things we don't want to, we don't want to take the dump drawer, the junk drawer and just take the junk drawer and put it into the wrapping paper and roll it all up. We're actually going to organize the contents of that. That way it makes it really easy and you're not, uh, when you're unpacking and you're not taking that clutter with you, you are going to be in that new home uh, organized rather quickly. So that was one of the things I wanted to mention about our services this week is the benefit of hiring a professional organizer to come in and pack you and unpack your home. You'll again be blown away. So don't forget next week on Tip Tuesday, we're going to be talking about uh, putting your home on the market and some things you need to do from a standpoint of an organizer and a realtor giving you some advice. And don't also forget we are giving away these picnic table tents, a uh, set of four of them. So what you, how do you win them? Leave a comment down below of the best tip. We have six tips today. And I'm gonna be posting some recipes on tip number six really shortly. And you'll be able to tell me which comment you like the most or which, which tip you like the most. And you will be entered for our drawing for next week. So next week on tip 2C, we'll announce the winner and then get out your picnic tents to you. So that's it. Oh, I do have a little bit of an update personally for all you fine folks out there that's sort of been keeping up with what's going on. My son came home and it was absolutely wonderful. The, the, this chartered bus started pulling in on this reserve base and we were already there in a the back parking lot. And it was just that bus couldn't have dro driven slower if I had put obstacles in its way. <laughs> it's like, come on, get in here. And uh, we had our grandkids and one of our sons there and we just welcomed our son home. It was absolutely fabulous. We are getting adjusted to having him back and, and absolutely he's getting adjusted to being back up. One of the things that sort of uh, made me smile, but at the same time sort of made me a little sad. He's like, well, where do y'all keep like the cheese and stuff? Like he doesn't know where things are and um, he's not used to our habits and it's just you really a unique situation. He has to sort of work his way back into our lives on a daily basis. So anyway, it's wonderful to have him home. I'll be speaking more about uh, that experience of him coming back and a little bit about him in our upcoming uh, newsletter should be released next week. We're in the process of doing some editing on it and we'll release that. So if you're not part of our newsletter, go onto the homepage of our website, which is getorganized.ws and make sure you sign up on our homepage on the right hand side. I believe you can sign up for our newsletter. If it's not there, you'll find it. It's it's definitely an organized webpage. It's, I just don't remember exactly where it's at. 
No, I'm not Miss Perfect. I do forget things. So. All right, well, Tip Tuesday. It's been a great day outside, beautiful weather, and I hope you have a wonderful organized picnic, and we'll see you next week on Tip Tuesday. Have a great day. Bye-bye, guys.